Hello and welcome to the Woodland Sticks uh, stick making course. What we're going to try and do over a series of several videos is to take you from actually cutting your stick to the finished product. So for cutting your stick, you cut your sticks when the sap is down, which is normally November, December, January, and that is your best time to cut before any leaf grows. So here we are into the woods and ready to start the stick. So we have a stand of hazel here. We're surrounded by hazel actually in this wood, which I'm not going to disclose as to where it is because when you get a wood, you want to make sure you guard it. Uh, and also make sure you do get permission off the landowner before you go in. And I always find the best way to approach a landowner is to either give him a stick or promise him a stick of once you've um, made them. So we'll start off with the basic stuff. So we need the cutting gear to start with. So if my cameraman goes down onto this, right, so we start off, you need a good strong pair of gloves. So if you've got cut any black thorn or any thorny stuff, a good pair of gloves is handy. Uh, your choice of saws, that's a little fold up pruning saw, uh, you can get them at most hardware shops. This one has a, a, a little fold up bow saw, they're often a favourite pair, tall is the, the loppers. I find they're very good, one good cut and you're through and it's a lot quicker than messing about with a, a little saw. The other necessity is your secateurs trimming off any side bits and a good strong pair of gloves if you're cutting blackthorn anything in that sort of line it's always better to have a pair of good solid gloves with you and okay so here we go now we'll make a start at doing a bit of cut these are the things you must look for when you're cutting and when you're new at the uh, stick cutting game it's very difficult to cut a stick that when they when you've cut they season for a year and they shrink and it's surprising how much a stick will shrink so always cut slightly on the larger size than you think you're going to need uh, the obvious thing is round about an inch on a thick end going down to about three quarter you want a good taper a taper on a stick gives it balance once you put a head on so this is your ideal type of stick here. So you've got a nice thick base to it. And don't forget when it's cut, you turn it upside down where the head will actually go onto the thing, and that will be where the ferrule goes on the bottom. So if you're looking, we've got a good, good inch or so there, and we've got a lovely taper. Now that is an ideal stick. There's no side pieces, there's nothing. It's a beautiful clean stick. So I'll cut him off. So I'll go down to about this step. So with these loppers, it's quite easy. Then we look for a length. Uh, the ideal length, you're looking for around about four foot six. But what I always say is cut it longer. So I should be cutting it about here, which is about five foot six. There is a perfect stick. Don't worry about the straightness, that will come after it's been seasoned and done. But if you look at that end, how, th how thin it is compared to that end. So that there will become that way up. Once it's seasoned, that is your stick. And that is a beautiful stick. It's not a lot, no solid growth, there's no scars, no, no deer teeth marks or rabbit marks. It's just a beautiful stick. Once seasoned, straightened, that'll be a cracker, a real cracker. So that is the sort of thing you look for. So if my cameraman now will just swing around, this is the ideal sort of woodland you need. A good, a good stand of hazel. You always find your best stuff in amongst this type of thing, rather than a, a, a stool that has been coppiced recently. So you want an old woodland where all the old trees have gone up big 
and they've got all this young stuff coming up underneath. That's where you find your best sticks. So always look out for this type of thing rather than a coppice hedge or a coppice bush. They are your best pieces. So if we have a wander around this one while I was cutting that I spotted another one. So have a wander around this way and we've got another one here. So if my cameraman can follow me around here, I'll have a look at this one. This is on the same stool again. See, so comes right at the bottom. Beautiful stick. It's got a little scar in there. I've just noticed it's a rub. You can see that, but often you do need a thinner stick. So looking at that, it's got a nice taper, beautiful colour. So where I'm going to go is just above the, the piece because I don't really want a good scab on it. Uh, Again, looking for something around about five foot, and I'll just cut the, cut the top off. And again, once I've trimmed them side bits off, a beautiful stick. So don't worry about the straightness, that'll all come in on a later DVD that we're going to work on. And we're going to work our way through through the woods. I'm hoping I can find you some, uh, what they call the twisties. Uh, they are very prized, a lot of people do love them. It's where the honeysuckle has wound its way around the stick and it bites in and contorts the stick. So hopefully we can find find one of them and just show you what how to find them and what to look for. So we'll switch off for now and we'll have a little wander and we'll see what else we can come up with. Right, see you in a little while. This is the sort of area we're looking for with the twisties. If you look, you can see the honeysuckle growing up into these bushes here, or into the hazel. Uh, you can see the bits of green coming on. It's one of the first things to put on any green in, in the uh, woodland in the spring. So here you can see we've got the honeysuckle growing all up onto these bushes. So now we just cast our eye in, we look right up high, Often it will twist up high or twist down low, so it's a matter of just getting your eye in and looking to see if there's anything twisted. Um, so what we've got here is, if we panning on this one here, it's got a slight twist into it at the top. Now if we look at that, uh, we've got a natural thumb stick, which is an easy stick to to make it's just a matter of straightening it season that straighten it up uh, a, a, a little bit of sandpaper and you've got yourself a stick so well I'll cut that down you don't really know what you've got till it's actually landed and you've got the honey suck off it but from here it looks as if it could be quite a good stick so I'll go in now and try and take it off and I say I'm looking more at that pocket so I'm having a guess now on the length so again I'm looking for something around about the five foot length so nothing down here no no bad bits or nothing on it so just trying to get in with the loppers so uh, that's cool if you can get in and get a hold of it once you've got it <coughs> that's it that's yours so anyway The, yeah, see, nice little bit of twisting. Uh, take it up there, here. Yeah. Yeah, the honeysuckle off. Try not to do too much damage to the honeysuckle. This is, uh, that's your future you're thinking of, and if you don't damage it too much, that'll go up again and strangle something else. So. We'll just get this cleaned off. Get the loppers. Twist all this old stuff off. And you can see we're starting to get a bit of a twist. That's not a terrific twist. But as I say, you never know what you've got till you've actually got it in your hand and trimmed it up. But that is roughly what we're 
looking for is this honeysuckle twist. So it's not a brilliant one, but it's a good thumbstick. So that's another idea of what to look out for. Instead of just cutting straight shades, hit my over there type of thing, instant stick. Right, then we'll move on, we'll see if we can find any more. Hopefully we can find a better one.